This uh, is the first cases from the you know, Asam our Medical uh, Asam Medical Center, and uh, I believe so. We are so we have uh, one of the you know perfect hard teams you know <laughs> among the uh, globally, and so we have uh, anesthesiology here and. And cardiac surgeon is is in the another room, right? And Dr. Han, Dr. Lee, and so uh, we prepared actually consecutive two cases. Uh, uh, we're gonna uh, use the S3 at yeah. uh, this time. So it's not a uh, you know a clear reason why so we, we're gonna use S3. Just that we are a little bit more familiar, so we're gonna start with this RPN, and so okay. We want to start the first cases, uh, Dr. Han. Okay. Uh, good morning, Dr. Grube. We prepared the two. Hello. Uh, we prepared the very two straightforward uh, sapien three cases. This is the first live demonstration case. The 78-year-old female was admitted with uh, dyspnea. He had a history of hypertension. Echo showed that severe aortic stenosis. No specific past medical history. Next, please. So he had hypertension, as this score is a two low risk patient. Hello. Next. Echo showed the ejection fraction is normal. A peak and mean pressure gradient 164, V max is 5.0. Arctic valve area is 0 0.6 square centimeters. Next. The no tortuous outer. Next. This is a peripheral access site. There is some classification, but the Fortunately, the location is opposite to the puncture site. External iliac artery is the right side, is 7.0, so we will access to the right side. Next. This is the CT measurement of uh, arctic valve complex. Annulus short diameter is uh, 19.5. Annulus long diameter is 24.0. Annulus uh, area is uh, 366 square millimeters. Next. This is a Falsalva and Science Tubular Junction. Falsalva is not so small. Science Tubular Junction is adequate size. Next. LVOT is not so small. Next. Calcium is 326 cubic millimeters. Our mean calcium score in our population is 400, so not so significant calcium. Next. Uh, left coronary height is 11. Right coronary height is 10, a little bit lower. But next, so the sizing is very straightforward. The uh, three twenty three millimeters area is uh, 415. This patient uh, area is uh, 300 around. So we, if we, we select 23, so oversize is only 12%. I think this is a perfect sizing for this patient. Mm -hmm. 10 to, uh, 10 to 15%. Yes, 10 to 15%. Percent. Uh, area oversizing, that is our by, uh, uh, CT measurement, right? Yes, right. And so in every case, we return it to a pre, you know, CT MD CT evaluation. And we didn't do the, you know, uh, previous chronic angel, even chronic angel from the previous, you know, any uh, invasive uh, measurement, and just mm. uh, according to, based on the CT algorithm, our own, al we have our own uh, algorithm concern, and so uh, area of size, 12%, I think is almost perfect. Yeah. And so we just uh, <coughs> decide uh, S3 uh, 23 size selection is uh, is uh, finished, and, and then as routine, so we have uh, no uh, general anesthesia, just a deep sedation and the routine pigtail and pacemakers and 18 French access from the right side, so. Uh, to in order to save the time, actually this is a routine uh, air to rams uh, perpendicular, you know, uh, analogs, uh, you know, perpendicular lines. So we measure by CT also, yes, right? Why? Exactly same angles, and so the calcification is quite, you know, uh, limited non chronic cusp yeah. and the other the left chronic cusp is, uh, you know, quite good. Uh, right chronic cusp is good, and so. We, okay, next, next. we did. So AL1. AL1? Yes, okay. Teflon so soft wire. Soft wire. It takes two seconds, right? <laughs> All right, so <laughs> we and, uh, push the ampullage guiders, and just we use the 
<coughs> next. Okay, next we use the you know soft wire uh, exchange with uh, Safari, yeah. you know stiff wires for the uh, main procedures. Uh, so all right, so we, we okay here we are. So we uh, place the Safari, and as a next step, so. Uh, what are the pre dilations we're going to do or not? Uh, that is one of the issues. However, in our practice, uh, depending on a calcium score, uh, average calcium is almost 400 mm -hmm. uh, you know, cubic millimeters in our data. And uh, below the that, below, uh, below the 400 something, so we are you know, going to do uh, some direct you know, uh, device implantations without, uh, uh, without uh, pre dilation. And so, I want to show, you know, how long will it take is quite, you know, very simplified procedures in terms of S3 uh, device. So we didn't see that what's happened. Okay, here we are. Um, okay. So wire cape. Um, all right. And the balloon bag, you know that. Yeah. Did you check the, the coronary artery anatomy? The uh, aortogram looks like uh, some angulation <coughs> in the ostium of the, mm -hmm. the left main, and uh, the mm -hmm. calcium was uh, uh, distributed in the mid area portion. Okay. So, yeah. uh, coronary anatomy is uh, not, there is uh, no significant narrowing. Yes, yeah. so we have uh, coronary angiograms uh, uh, taken uh, from the other hospital, uh, so we didn't check it. Uh, okay, a little more tuning. More further advance. Okay, I think it's good. Yeah, perfect. Lock. Lock. Okay. And then, okay. Wire, please. Mm -hmm. I'll keep the wires and angulated. The maximum angulated device system in the aortic root. And then, so we need a little bit, you know, push the device. The reason why is we didn't do a pre dilation and uh, maybe it's quite enough to okay. What is it? Test please? Test. Okay, a bit further. Implantation implantation bureau of Dr. Sale. Test please? Test please. Okay, pull the, pull the... It's actually nice. Pull the push out. Okay. Why? Okay, good. Perfect. Then, lock here. Test, please. Okay. If you look at, uh, you know, device, is a little bit, you know, one millimeter migrate into the distally. And we're going to... Uh, Okay, see that the device position rather than the, you know, balloon position. Test, please. Test. Test again. I think it's a little bit, you know, more than half, a little bit deep than you expected. If you look at the, you know, dot of a balloon, however, the device is one millimeter, is, you know, migrate upside. Test, please. Test. What do you think? Good. Good. So, pick it out and... Uh, Okay. okay, pacing, please. Okay. Um, okay, why not? Inflate. All right. Two, four, three, four, five. five. Inflate. That moved up. Okay, pacing off. Pacing off. A All right. So we'll, you know, if you look at the proximal distal ratio, concern is almost uh, 100 to 0 is 95 yeah. percent, you know, 95 yeah. to 5. But however, uh, just a, a little bit worry about you know uh, the device migrations from the balloon one millimeters, and so we are put into the, you know, during the uh, inflations a little bit you know uh, upper positions. However, I think it's okay. Test please. Test it. 23, let's mm. take a picture here. Yep. Is, is this a purposely, high, I mean, is this a high, uh, SJ high implant? Oh, no, I, 
Uh, it is a little bit higher than, uh, than average, high. average, right? Uh, compared to the average, however, I think it's you know almost yes, perfect, perfect position. Uh, you know, just on the analysis line. Even uh, in case of uh, there are some AR, yeah. would you sh Can would you, you tell us Dr. Lee about the? It's mild, right? No, no, mild. Dr. Ho, hmm? over there. Wait, okay. Oh, how this is there, Dr. Yeah. Ho? Okay. This would is you check out? When, you, when you use uh, the Safari wire, mm -hmm. so actually the uh, the some the severe aortic regurgitation or the mitral regurgitation caused by the Safari wire itself. Right. You mean the uh, bell, you know, the right. central central uh, aortic regurgitation, right? So I want to just confirm. Uh, I think and then it's mild to moderate. Mm -hmm. However, mainly uh, related with the central or See, when you, when you deploy the valve and you have the root full of injection, then you really don't see and then it's very difficult to correct um, the deployment. Okay. Maybe the, the stiff, stiff wire is also causing some of the mm -hmm. regurgitation here. Yeah. See, All now... Right. You, okay. you may check the, the uh, exchange the, the Sapari wire with a pigtail. No. And then do okay, the angiogram, right. and right. Uh, the, you can uh, compare the, the severity of the regurgitation. Yeah. Well, it's, it looks like intravalvular um, leak. Yeah. Mild valvular leak at mm -hmm. the wire site. You mean? Mild, mild valvular leakage on the wire site. Mild paravalvular? No, ma mild valvular. Valvular due to the wire. Central? Yeah. And what about the perivalvular? Peri 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 I, I cannot see any significant mm -hmm. parabolicage. Mm -hmm. So, I think it's almost perfect as a way out. All right. Mild air. Yeah, uh, test, please. Dr. An and uh, okay. Dr. Pang, this is Edgar from Singapore. Can I just ask you how many percentage of your case do you still do balloon pre-dilatation or is it your practice now to direct implant in all your cases? They uh, go by the catheter score. Right. Uh, actually, we have a routine, you know, uh, in terms of predilation. So, with any in any cases, however, the selected cases with uh, you know low calcium scores and not you know pretty much you know eccentric concern and not too much uh, tight stenosis, mm -hmm. etc. As we did, uh, just uh, you know, uh, direct uh, device implantations, right? And um, what do you think? It is mild to, all right, uh, in some, we want to wait for a while. Um, there is some, let's see, Bob, yep. it just came. Uh, there right. is some indentation on the NC side. So how about to check the valve frame at the other angle when there is a, uh, on the expansion of certain part of uh, Sapien 3, mm -hmm. it is time, right time to do a post dilatation. Mm -hmm. Because there is a mild okay. regurgitation. Is it is it shallow area or something? All right. Okay, why not? We will measure. Okay. Well, okay, we're nowadays, are you still using any hemodynamic measurements to assess the post or Tavi AL? Are you still using any sort of no. AL index or measure the uh, hemodynamic afterwards in your center? No, we didn't. I think you're do not that. using that anymore. Oh, yeah, we didn't do that. So, in, in the, after the table procedures, uh, the mainly, you know, any follow up uh, with the uh, echocardiograph uh, graph laboratories, and uh, they did, they have a they routine exam. Uh, and so, we didn't too much stick to the, you know, hemodynamic uh, uh, measurement after the table procedure. So, okay, what about the, uh, Dr. Hall? Any? Um, because sometimes it's very difficult just to base on the transphoracic echo, especially mm. for patients that's not echogenic. You are mm. doing it under a minimalist approach without the TEE, so sometimes it's difficult. It's a challenge mm -hmm. for, our idiot, for our echo cardiographer to have a precise assessment of the AR just based on the transphoracic approach. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I agree with you, and as far as I can see, there's no significant paravalvular MR. It, uh, AR. It looks like there's trivial AR at three o'clock site, but trivial. not significant. Nice. 
So we like to change it. The RAO cranial view. Okay. This is routine view for mm -hmm. the probably uh, so leakage the, evaluation. I, I, I'm going to wait for a while. A little bit more. And then we can do that. Just more. Okay. The S3 has the skirt and sometimes it takes a while for the skirt to fill mm. up and then we do see that the regurgitation sometimes gets a bit less mm. when we wait a bit more. Mm. I think it will be getting better, right? So I think this is a perfect result. Uh, uh, my very very you trivial, know. probably a leak case. Mm. No problem, I think. All right, just uh, uh, Dr. Kim Hyo Su Kim suggests that uh, in uh, in some cases, we did, you know, post dilation. So one cis over inflate, two cis over inflate. However, this is very small, yeah. uh, you know, device. Actually, the area oversize is almost 12%. Uh, I think it's uh, quite enough uh, based on our, uh, you know, experience, our data. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the degree of uh, aortic regurgitation is getting, getting decreased, in, even immediately after mm -hmm. the, you know, S3, uh, so I believe uh, actually getting is more, you know, less uh, PBLs in the five minutes later something. Yeah. So I'm just uh, uh, want to show that the uh, just we discussed, uh, you know, the procedure is going to be, you know, uh, focused on that one and the placement and the uh, uh, device migration in case of uh, S3, just like one millimeter is not too, uh, you know, big issues. As however, uh, it took, uh, you know, if we got some ideas, uh, I think it's, uh, it took it uh, not too long time. So I wanted to show that. And so you're going to see uh, how much PVLs uh, get uh, decreased, right? And so maybe. Uh, you can get more, you know, detailed procedures information from large second cases, yes, large second markers. Case. <laughs> All right, he is waiting for second cases. Any any comment on that, Eva? Any 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 further? Well, comment? maybe I can ask a question to Dr. Kupi. Are you well using the total calcium score four hundred as a dividing line for decide whether you balloon would no, do no, pre dilatation no. or not? in your practice? No, I think that's, that's interesting. As you know, SJ always tries to, to justify his, his procedure and, and mm -hmm. he's, he's going to, to, you know, to do some kind of measurement and he set the bar at, four, uh, at 400 100. and uh, that's the way he goes. As you know, we routinely do not pre-dilate. We have yeah. to find a reason to pre-dilate and the reason is uh, by cuspid or balloon sizing, whatever you call that, or you have really massive calcifications. That's the only thing. Otherwise, mm -hmm. we don't pre-dilate anymore. Not really. But yeah. that's, I mean, that's, that's what he's done. That's, he's studying everything and he's mm -hmm. establishing some kind of rules and regulations and that's why I appreciate his, his comments on the, on the calcification, on the score, on the calcium score. If I'm not mistaken, it's 400, right? Yeah. That's mm -hmm. the cutoff. Mm -hmm. Uh, more than 400, which, you know, it's, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. um, f for me, it's more important where the calcium is yeah. and whether how it's distributed around the, the annulus right. and, and within the leaflets than the score itself, even right. though right. if it's really high, then it's just a lot right. of calcium. Yeah. Exactly. You know, the in, in uh, calcium uh, concern, actually, just uh, could have mentioned about, you know, where uh, it will be, how big, how much uh, calcium score. Uh, that is, we have very uh, unpleasant experience as more than almost 800 calcium, uh, you know, cubic millimeters. Uh, a little bit, we can decide a little bit smaller, you know, device size. The reason why, uh, just one case, one case is of, uh, uh, you know, analyst lobsters is mainly related with the calcium, you know, a large amount of calcium is almost uh, 1,000, you know, uh, cubic millimeters. So we have uh, no idea. It's exactly less, you know, area uh, oversizing less than 100 percent. Still, the risk of uh, you know annulus rupture is due to the calcium score. And so we learn, you know, calcium score and and the in uh, about yeah. you mentioned about the locations, right? And uh, as we measure the height of uh, coronary ostium, so I want to right. shorten the, our, our cases, our height. However, depending on the size 
size ratio. So uh, the reason why, is would you show us such a ratio? Just a thing. We measure the sinus and ST right. junction and LVOT. Okay. However, we uh, calculated uh, the sinus annulus area ratio concern, right? Mm -hmm. If the sinus is big enough, there are some calcium, localized calcium, so large size, I think it sometimes doesn't matter, right? Yes. Uh, depending right. on uh, you know sinus size, uh, however, uh, average no, I agree with that. right, right, average concern. So we the reason why is we measure the ratios, sinus annulus ratios, uh, sinus junction annulus ratios, and so we have some average you know yeah. value, 1.8 something, yeah. so 1.49 is yeah. average. However, in some cases, big sinus, in some cases, small sinus, even you know height is quite enough. Si sinus side is small. Sometimes some, you know, uh, coronary floors uh, interfere. Uh, you know, uh, so we have to consider that point. So, uh, really, 400 uh, total averages. And so, just so we, you know, is not a, uh, you know, uh, truly uh, based on the data. Uh, however, we have uh, experiment. Uh, our experience based on our experience, 400 is cut up. Lower than that, relatively smaller calcium amount. You're gonna do the you know freely. Uh, however, it's a big calcium, the large calcium, the very tight stenosis. During the procedures, you know, if device implanted in an undilated valve, sometimes it's you know blood pressure is getting down, <laughs> you know, and I don't like that one. And so tight stenosis, large amount of calcium, so just you mentioned, so we did predilation, almost lutini. However, uh, particular these cases, you know, small amount of calcium is, uh, you know, coronary, uh, left coronary, right coronary, cause uh, is free of calcium, so, you know, and we're going to do a, a direct test. Okay, we're going to wait uh, almost uh, five minutes. So, so if you, um, SJ, just one question um, right. with access to the coronaries. Um, you know, this is why the, the Sapien 3 has the largest cells on the, on the upper cell uh -huh. uh, of the, at the crowns. You would feel comfortable accessing the coronaries in this situation, right? Yes. 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 Have you ever done cases uh, on a sapien yeah. and re? Yes, um, we have. We have uh, two cases uh, after no, no, no. sapien no. implantation. We performed the coronary intervention for I left see. side, but mm -hmm. fortunately, we 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 don't have any problem to access to the left coronary Good. artery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we're going to wait uh, more than five minutes and to take a picture. Yeah. So, all right, L2 gram again. All right, sure. All right, what do you think? <laughs> do you want to steal, <laughs> do you want to steal <laughs> the second high pressure inflation for that? No. No, if, no. In my, good. I don't want to do that. <laughs> any any <laughs> comments from the panel? Uh, any, any concerns? No. Actually, SJ, the you know, I don't hear anything from the audience. Dr. Kim, you have to, something to say. Mm -hmm. uh, she's uh, about 78 years old. I, I think uh, her life expectancy is about 12 years. So I think even mild parabellar leakage, uh, if it is preventable... This is trivial. I would like to... <laughs> <laughs> but if you perform Not the mild. other angle, there is... Definite uh, under expansion of the NCC size, All just right. once it's over film, just okay. one minute procedure right. for the next 15 years, uh, her <laughs> remain alive. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Good. So, okay, so what I'm, what I'm, I'd clearly, uh, you know, getting decrease, you know, PBL, even in the, during the immediate after the procedures or five minutes later, is uh, clear, right? And then, uh, I'm sure, uh, I don't know, in the future, uh, AL is uh, really, you know, hemodynamic, hemodynamic problems, whether or not, as we're going to see that. Okay. All right, we're going to move. Second case is, is more, you know, uh, educational uh, from the large macros. Okay. So Thank you very much, SJ. Very, right. very well done. Let's <laughs>